JJK270 left us with a lot to dwell on. So today we're going to be going over y'all's questions and theories. So if you're not caught up, spoilers beware. All right, so first up today, we got this one from Cam, and y'all know the drill. Pause to read the whole thing, but he said he just wanted to highlight the possibility that Takaba might have brought back Kenjaku to serve as his comedy partner. And yeah, I think that would be absolutely hilarious if so. I, I've talked about it a little bit in previous videos, but I think it, there's basically two options, with that being one of them, and then the other option being that it's not Kenjaku, it's just somebody that's been made up to look like Kenjaku to serve as his comedy partner, to kind of fill the void that Takaba has left left after his great experience with Kenny. So between those two options, I'm leaning toward the latter because it would be a funny gag and I feel like Gege would do something like that. Plus it doesn't come with all of the baggage of a Kenjaku return, right? Which I don't know how we would unpack that with only one chapter left. But if it is set up for a part two or just something crazy, then that's obviously still on the table. But yeah, we'll have to find out. Next up, we got this one from Doms, who starts by saying, I have a dumb question, and I gotta stop you right there. There are no dumb questions. If you're asking a question, that means you're trying to learn something. You're trying to broaden your understanding, and that's a sign of intelligence. So anybody that ever says somebody has a dumb question, they're dumb, and you can tell them I said so. But as you can see here, we'll pause to read the whole thing, and this is blacked out for spoilers on another series. Just didn't wanna, you know, jump scare anybody with that. But Doms is essentially saying, like, in my opinion, why would Gege do a series? Equal as opposed to just continuing JJK. Like, why would JJK Part 2 be an entirely new manga as opposed to just continuing JJK? Uh, and this is a great point. I don't think there's going to be a Part 2 right now, uh, just for various reasons. We'll see what happens in the final chapter. Like, maybe it's teeing up a Part 2 and my opinion will change. But yeah, for now, I don't think we'll get a Part 2. I think a lot of people are comparing this to like Naruto, uh, where, you know, we had it, time skip, Naruto ship it in, right? But the thing about that was it was all Naruto. It was still all that singular manga. So I agree. I don't think there would be this big hubbub if there was going to be a continuation. Like there wouldn't be all this talk about the final five chapters. JJK is ending just to be like, psych, JJK part two. Like even if you want to classify JJK part two as an entirely separate manga, it's still just like a bit disingenuous. All of this to say there could still entirely be a part two and maybe this is like a marketing gimmick to some extent. Um, but yeah, I, I would say in either case, it wouldn't be crazy. Like there easily could be a part two and this could just be part of how they're designing it. Like who knows what, like who even knows what the story would be about, right? So maybe it would make sense to separate it and make it something else. But I'm getting very long winded here. Point is, I agree with you. Like if part two was just a continuation of Yuji and his story, even if there was a time jump or something, it doesn't make much sense to end JJK. You would just continue it. So we'll see what happens. Next up, we got this one from Corwin who says, no question, just showing love before JJK is over. And thank you so much for the support, man. Next up, we got this one from Les, who says, here's hoping Gege brought Nobra back to be the star of his idol manga, and that would be hilarious. So for those of you that don't know, Gege has expressed interest in writing a manga about an idol, like aka a pop star. I don't think he would do something like this. I think if he did want to like move away from JJK, he would move away from JJK, but I'd check it out. Next up, we got this one from Big, and first of all, thank you so much for the kind words, man. But he says, do you think Sukuna could come back as a vengeful cursed spirit if Yuji actually let him pass away? Or do you think there would be complications since he was an incarnated sorcerer? And that's a great question. I do think the incarnated sorcerer aspect throws a wrench into things. So I don't know how that would compute with the vengeful cursed spirit possibility. But that being said, I do think if Sukuna did pass away in that moment, uh, like Yuji used cursed energy to put him down. So I don't think he would even qualify anyway, if that makes sense. Next up, we got this one from Kali Q. And the first half up here talks about the whole Kenjaku thing. And they say that they 100% think it's a troll, aka it's not Kenjaku, but it's somebody dressed up like him. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm leaning that way as well. But they point out in chapter 240, Takaba even says that uh, Ghetto's monk get up with long hair makes for a great comedy act. So yeah, that especially makes it seem like it would be something he just tried to emulate to like recapture that glory that he had with Kenjaku. But then Callie also uh, brings up the two people from chapter 270 uh, in the leaks video. The girl with Higuruma was his associate, and uh, that kid was one that Yuji saved during Amai's flashback back in 163. So thank you for those clarifications. 
Next up, we got this one from OK. Y'all pause to read it, but there's a few things to address here. The first is that, you know, he really liked the chapter, but a lot of people have been clowning on it. And that's just going to be par for the course, honestly, with with anything, but especially with this ending of JJK. I promise you, like, no matter what in the infinite spectrum of endings there could have been, there would have been a loud chorus of people that said they hated it and a loud chorus of people that said they liked it. I enjoyed it, too. And, you know, to each their own, right? Uh, they say then that the curse user at the end might have been Takaba. That's an interesting possibility. I don't know if, I don't, I mean, comedian can do anything, right? So it could theoretically have this effect on the woman viewing her fiance this way, but I don't think that'll be what's going on. I think whatever's happening with Kenjaku is kind of its isolated thing with Takaba and probably not related to this uh, woman and her fiance. Uh, and then you also say the beginning of the chapter could have been referring to Gojo when Shoko said he should have given her the body. Uh, yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. I think it was referring to Gojo not giving Geto's body to Shoko to like cremate or whatever the case may be, right? We still don't know exactly what happened with Geto's body, but obviously whatever it was gave Kenjaku the window to steal it. So I think she was just saying, man, we could have prevented this if Gojo just hadn't have been an idiot about that. And then finally, the last bit of copium, Gojo took Geto's body and is using it as a host. Now, I don't see this happening, but uh, this that would certainly be crazy. And he's just doing comedy with Takuba now. Next up, we got this one from Big Head who says, if this series does have a part two, I have a feeling Sukuna will be the Frieza of the series. A crazy threat that's initially defeated, but then comes back later. And he goes on to list some of their parallels. And I agree with those. Um, but if we did get a JJK part two, that was like about Yuji, then I too would hope that Sukuna was in it because as I'm sure you guys know, I, as of right now, think that Sukuna is living on within Yuji. We'll see. Um, but the only thing I would be wary of if we did get this is that I wouldn't want Sukuna to have too much characterization. Like I wouldn't want him to have a Kurama-esque arc, if that makes sense, because I really like that Sukuna is just the way he is. And, you know, maybe he will get some form of you know, perspective over the course of a lifetime with Yuji, but I just wouldn't want him like fully going 180, if that makes sense. So we would need to be careful of that. But if he was properly utilized, I think that would be a really cool angle. Next up, we've got a longer theory here from Croderick. I think there's four different slides. So I'm going to run through each of these in case y'all want to pause and read them, and then we'll talk about it. All right, so Croderick's theory is basically that Gojo will return and ascend by becoming a star plasma vessel and essentially merging with Tengen. And they have a lot of really well thought out points and evidence here, which again, y'all can pause to read and check out. Uh, I personally don't see this happening just because, well, one, I have the benefit of, you know, having the good translations out now. And so we know that the remains of Tengen were within Sukuna and those are being, you know, placed back in the uh, tomb of the star corridor in order to maintain the barriers and stuff. So it doesn't appear as if like Tengen needs to merge with somebody else, at least at this moment. But even still, I feel like if Gojo did return, then if this was the end of his story, it would kind of be the culmination of him um, just being a thing, right? Just being a tool to Jujutsu society. And in and of itself, that could be a, um, what's the word here? A poetic ending insofar as it's tragic, you know, that like, he is just kind of doomed to fill that for the rest of time and, you know, protect everyone else, serve as that weapon. In my opinion, if he does come back, I kind of want it to be the complete 180, that he is Gojo because he's Gojo, right? And so maybe he lives a life not as the strongest, not having to fulfill that type of role in society anymore. But uh, again, I just because I disagree with something, I don't ever want it to seem like I don't like it because I live for this shit. So thank you so much for the write-up. Next up, we got this from Tiberius, who, as always, is a YouTube member. Shout out to you, King. And on this note, by the way, I think I can customize these little icons for members. So what should they be? I, I need some ideas if you guys got any. It's so small that, like, I don't know if, like, a full character would make sense. But y'all just let me know if you have any ideas. But anyways, Tiberius says uh, about Kenjaku's body swap, he wonders if a brain transplant is actually part of it or not. And I have been wondering this the whole time. And even with all of this YouTube gojo stuff we still don't know so i'm right there with you i think it's inconclusive to say that for sure there was a brain transplant involved i know there's a scar but you know we still don't really know the exact mechanism of how this works there may very well be a brain swap and actual surgery involved but i don't think there has to be and 
granted with one chapter left i don't know if we'll get any like full closure on that like one aspect or not but we'll see next up we got this from t plumsify and i don't know if i said that right but it was fun to say so i hope it was right but let me know they say that their theory is that next chapter megami is going to wake up in a hospital months later and it turns out he was in a coma and this was all from the effects of unlimited void and everything we've been seeing has been kind of a false reality in this way and i actually put out a video a little bit earlier today talking about the whole infinite Tsukiyomi and why the chapter was called the dream's end so check that out if you haven't but in my opinion i don't think there's anything like that going on i think that was just in reference to gojo's vision for the future and the fact that he was able to successfully accomplish that see that through so um yeah i mean who knows especially if we're getting a part two maybe there is some sort of crazy twist like this so we'll have to see what happens in 271 Next up, we got this one from Foot Fantastic, and y'all pause to read it, but he deals with the idea that what if the whole curse thing at the very end of the chapter was actually Curse Spirit Gojo? It hinges on the idea that the world cutting slash maybe would not be considered dying to cursed energy, and therefore Gojo could have become a vengeful curse spirit. I've even talked about that idea before, so I don't think that's like the craziest thing in the world, but I don't think that's what's happening here. Uh, one, I just don't think Gege would bring back vengeful curse spirit Gojo for a single single chapter uh, that feels like it would be like a way bigger thing uh, but two i think if gojo was a vengeful curse spirit his abilities and powers would be way 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 crazier than just you know the residual cursed energies in the girl viewing her her fiance differently i would at least hope vengeful curse spirit gojo was just like a massive special grade problem uh but even beyond that i understand why you're saying that because of the strangeness of gojo not being mentioned like maybe it's because it's in lead up to this as i'm sure you know i too think that is strange and is leading to something but i just don't think it's cursed spirit gojo uh and then finally you ask what animated fight do i think will be the best once it's all done i think it has to be gojo sukuna like, that's just such an insane and iconic fight already that I think they are going to go absolutely insano with it, like Sukuna versus Maharaga style, but like times 10. So I hope it's that. Like, I hope they give it the justice it deserves. But other than that, I'm also looking forward to just the entire Sukuna gauntlet, honestly. Toto and Yuji versus Sukuna, that's going to be absolutely peak. And of course, uh, Kashimo versus Hikari, I think will be really hype as well. Also, thank you so much for the kind words, man. And I've been trying to decide if I should keep growing it or get it cut. So we'll see. Next up, we got this from Silencer who says, if Kenjaku were to survive, do you think Takaba had something to do with it? And what I'll say is prior to chapter 270, no, I would have assumed if Kenjaku came back, it would have been due to some nuance of turning yourself into a cursed object or with his body swap or something in that avenue. But now after 270, like if Kenjaku truly is back, then yes, I do think Takaba had something to do with it because if not, why else this scene? Why is he with him and, you know, working on their comedy routine? So uh, if that is the case, then you ask, how would that have worked? It would just be his comedian curse technique. We know that as the ability to manipulate reality reality and this would be taking it to an extreme but it would theoretically be in the wheelhouse right i mean there's you know gege even compared the technique to be on the level of gojo so the, the technique is no joke i guess it would be capable of that should talk about think that was funny so um yeah if if he truly is back i'm imagining it's a product of the comedian curse technique and i, I think it would be funny uh but again with one chapter left i don't really know what the point of that would be unless there is some sort of part two and then finally for this video we've got this from keyblade king and i'm pretty sure i said this last time but shout out kingdom hearts uh, but y'all pause to read this. He's saying, could the curse user reference at the end of the chapter perhaps be the next incarnation of Mahito, like the next incarnation of the disaster curse representative of humanity? Because, and granted, that guy looked very idol transfiguration-esque with like the huge bug eyes. But no, I don't think so. Uh, for a couple of reasons, I think that that would be like a way more sinister, powerful thing that they would have been able to recognize. But on top of that, idol transfiguration, even if it could be done at range I don't think makes sense for what we saw because that guy actually was completely normal like his eyes didn't actually look like that his fiance just perceived him to look like that so something was done to her perception so I don't think that really falls in line with what idol transfiguration can do but also like you know, maybe it's just a completely new type of technique. But then in that case, I think we're getting further and further away from like the reincarnation of Mahito. That's going to do it for this one, y'all. Thank you guys so much for sending in your support and thank you for watching.